just heard the uh, the ad again. If you haven't heard it up until now from Texas Governor Rick Perry, he's in town on Thursday. He's going to join me in the 2 o'clock hour on Thursday afternoon. Right now we're joined by the Speaker of the Missouri House to talk a little bit about that ad and about the veto session override attempt that's going to come up here in just a couple of weeks. Hey, Tim, how are you? Welcome back. Mark, I'm great. Thanks for having me on again. Good to talk to you. Let me, um, before I get to some specifics of the the override session that is coming up quickly upon us, uh, what what is your impression of the ad that's running from the Texas governor? You know, Mark, uh, what's 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 interesting is the reaction uh, to the ad from the governor, from the left, uh, from the left wing media, which is really the mouthpiece for Governor Nixon. It's pretty much his, or his spokespeople. They rush to his aid all the time and. I think the hysterical reaction from them means there's something there. There's some, there's some truth there that we should be concerned about. And as the ad properly points out, there's a lot of facts in that ad. And the facts are that Texas uh, has a lot going well for it economically. It is a growing state. Uh, it has low tax revenues, a fair tax base. Uh, it, has, it is right to work, which means it has the ultimate in worker freedom and worker choice. It's got good, fair courts. These are all issues that Missouri is challenged upon. We need to improve ourselves in all of those areas. You know, Missouri's got a good financial base, Mark, good economic base of a AAA bond rating, uh, of, uh, of, of not raising taxes in 10 years thanks to Republicans, of having balanced budgets thanks to Republicans. But, Mark, we're stuck in neutral because we lack executive leadership at the top. Governor Nixon's been in office now for five, nearly five years. He has yet to unveil any sort of broad-based jobs, growth, economic development package. I would challenge anyone to tell me what his, what his plan is. Instead, Mark, he has cut money from education every single year. He is the anti-education governor, whereas the Missouri House has put more money into education. And this, this tax cut, this very measured, common-sense conservative, uh, fiscally conservative tax cut, is an opportunity to finally grow Missouri's economy. Because what we're doing is not working. Let's try something different. Let's try something positive. Let's move Missouri forward. Your friends at the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, and by the way, I agree with you on the governor and, and the lack of leadership, and, and I, I even started out the hour talking about that. But but here, here's where I'm a little concerned, because I do think that there's a message in that ad from Rick Perry, and I'll ask him about it on Thursday, that is um, a little suspect when it comes to this attempt to sort of poach jobs from Missouri. Now, the, the reality of the situation is, is that if people are going to move to Texas or another state, they're going to decide it based on something other than, than a radio ad or a television ad that's running throughout the state. But are you concerned at all? Because he, here's you're, you're doing your job as the speaker and trying to get enough votes to override this veto, and I don't know where you are in that process. Maybe you can give me an update. But when it comes to the PR war that's being waged, and there's a lot of ads out there, Club for Growth, the uh, Chamber of Commerce, and others that are encouraging the override, it, it doesn't seem to me that your side, which happens to be my side, because I think you should override this veto, is winning the PR battle. And I tend to agree a little bit with the Post-Dispatch that Rick Perry probably helped the other side here. Well, Mark, you know, I, I, would, I, would, um, I would disagree with my good friends at the editorial board of the Post-Dispatch. And I, I would also like to point out to your audience, a major newspaper editorial board came out this week in favor of the override, the St. Joseph News Press. Those brave uh, editorial board writers over there in northwest Missouri, and they cover a lot of ground over there on the western side of the state. Now, Post-Dispatch likes to pretend that Kansas doesn't exist, there's no massive competition, that businesses are not bleeding out of Kansas City, Missouri, to Johnson County, Kansas. They like to ignore all that because I guess we have Illinois over here, and so they always make us look better. But that should not be our, our, our measuring stick. Uh, you, you know, Mark, the, the problem is that we do, we are stuck at 47th, in GDP growth in the country. That's nothing to be proud of. And so what Governor Perry is doing, he's challenging us. He's challenging us to look at the policy decisions that have been made, or more importantly, as you just pointed out, not being made by Governor Nixon. What is his plan for tax reform? What is his plan for job growth? What is his plan for labor reform so we can have more worker freedom in our state? What is his plan for court reform? All those policies that Governor Perry was talking about I don't want any businesses to move out of this state. I want them to come here. I want them to grow here. But if we're going to continue to have a governor who is the CEO of our state who fails to lead with no plan, then you have to wonder uh, what are job creators supposed to do? Are they, con- are they supposed to be continued to be satisfied with average, with mediocre? 
or should they be asking for more? Mark, we, we are going to win the war on this. The battles are won and lost. The skirmishes are won and lost along the way. But, Mark, I will point out, during session, I had 103 votes on the first ever, first ever tax reform package in nearly a century. That is a huge victory. We only need 82 votes to pass any bill. So we are way over that margin. And we are so close to convincing a supermajority of Missouri's representatives that that is the way to grow the economy. So, Mark, whatever happens in veto session, and I'm going to continue to soldier on, and I want to get this override, time is on our side. History is against the governor. Economic facts are against the governor. If we want to compete in the Midwest and in the region as a whole, we have to have a better, more fair tax system. We have to move towards a right-to-work state, and we have to improve our courts so they're more friendly and fair to businesses and individuals. House Speaker Tim Jones is my guest. So in the couple of weeks remaining, I mean, the focus seems to be on a handful of rural lawmakers who are very worried about where money is going to come for education, because unlike some of the districts here that we're used to and have been in the news lately here in St. Louis, where property taxes support most of these districts, the uh, the rural districts have to depend on the state for their money. And the scare tactics have worked, haven't they? Uh, Mark, unfortunately, uh, people are afraid of fear. And, and as many great, great leaders throughout history have said, you know, the only thing you have to fear is fear itself. Don't be afraid of fear. Have, have courage to marshal on. And, and, that, and these, can be, these can be challenging times. But we need bold leaders who are willing to take that fear, learn, learn what is in that fear, overcome it, and move forward. And, Mark, that's what I've been, been trying to do and urging my caucus, encouraging my caucus to do. I'll go back to what I said earlier. The governor is the one who is creating the education funding crisis in this state. And it is, it is shameful and embarrassing that the left-wing media does not report the truth on that. It has been Jay Nixon every single year who has withheld or cut money from K-12 through and higher education. And, Mark, I guess these groups have Stockholm Syndrome or something, because what the governor does is he takes them hostage, he takes their money, he blackmails and extorts them and says, I'm not going to give it back to you unless you do my bidding. And so they're just doing his bidding. Mark, there's a lot of smart people at the university level, and in our K-12 through institutions. I will bet you if you sit those people aside and talk economic philosophy to them, a lot of them will probably agree with us that you, can, you can't tax and spend your way to prosperity, but you can reduce the tax burden on job creators, small businesses, and farmers, and Missouri's farmers and, small, and families, which will encourage them to invest that money back into the system. It's the economic circle of life. Mark, we're, the, I would say the vote is too close to call. But not only on that vote, but on the other 28 bills that Governor Nixon vetoed, the second most in state history, we're going to try to put Governor Nixon into the history books and make him the most overridden governor ever. But do you really, only- do, you, do you really think you can get, you, you say it's too close to call, so you really think this is not over yet, that as we head closer to September 11th, you can get enough of your Republicans, you have to have every one of them in line yeah. voting for the override. Yes, we do. And I also will be talking again to the three Democrats who voted in favor of the bill as well. Yeah, any updates on that? Well, Representative Jeff Rorta from your listening area in Jefferson County, uh, he has said he's still unsure. He's not sure what he's going to do. I hope he's not a flip-flopper. I hope he still stays with the taxpayers and uh, is in favor of putting more money back in their pockets for the good folks in Jefferson County. He wants to be their next state senator. So let's see where he is on, on this very important philosophical area. Representative Ed Schieffer, also in your listening area up in Lincoln County, uh, he voted for the bill, and uh, so did Representative Steve Hodges uh, way down in the boot heel. So it depends on how those gentlemen vote. Uh, there's other Democrats that I've heard are, are definitely very concerned about how this vote will be portrayed uh, in the next election. Mark, you know, good politics do make good policy. Uh, it is good policy to offer a tax reduction to all Missourians for the first time in nearly a century. That translates into good politics and vice versa. It will translate into economic growth for the state. That's all I care about. You know, I, I could care less with if, if the governor has spent the entire summer flying around in his taxpayer-funded fancy airplane, wasting taxpayer funds on jet fuel, not having a solution to any of these problems, not having an agenda, talking about the education crisis here in St. Louis, which I've been talking about, talking about labor reform, talking about our energy infrastructure crisis. He's talking about none of that. He's campaigned all summer long in a very negative way, against one bill. What a waste of time and leadership. The number that they use, though, Tim, in the Post this morning, and I don't know if if this is a challengeable number, is that in terms of total state tax revenue per capita, Missouri has the 46th lowest burden in the nation, three places better than Texas. 
Do you think that's an accurate number? Oh, oh, Mark, I'm sorry, I left you there. Uh, I think I heard that. You know, Mark, I, I always challenge the Post-Dispatch on their numbers because they pick and choose and they take data from here and there. Mark, here's what I do know. This is something where the editorial board writers have never refuted me. I've, I've brought this up many times, posted it on my Twitter feeds and Facebook pages and said it at press conferences. The state of Oklahoma dramatically cut its income tax rates about four or five years ago. They just had the largest ever influx into their budget this past month as far as revenue. So other states... And they did it by allowing... See, this is why I think the argument should be about the size of government and allowing people... It's a very basic philosophical question. I think... And this is why I'm a little frustrated because I think it should be framed that way. And I understand that there's some disadvantage because of the way most of the media works. But the the bottom line question is, is the folks that are against this override want to grow government and keep growing government, regardless of what the results of growing government are, which aren't very good in most cases. Mark, we need to have you as one of the spokesmen, because that, that is exactly what I've been saying as well. That is in a nutshell. You either think the people and the small businesses and the families and the farmers of the state can spend their money better, or you believe government needs more money. And they think government, and I know that, but but what I don't know is how people are reacting to the PR battle, and I think that my sense is, just sort of sitting on the sidelines, is that the governor's side might be winning that PR battle right now, which doesn't leave you in a very good position for the veto session. Right now, right now, and, and I'll, you know, Mark, I, I, I will, uh, I will, let, I will presume that I don't agree with. But that. the let's game's not over. Let's, let's play this. You're right because if, if, if let's say the bill is not overridden, and now we're still going to try and work as hard as we can, we still think there's a shot for that. Definitely, there is a path to victory. But if not, then December first, I predict one of the first bills that's going to be filed is going to be a very pure tax cut bill that's going to take care of a lot of the other little problems the governor's talked about. And then we're going to have that debate beginning January 1, and we're going to pass a tax cut for all Missourians, and I'm going to do my best to get 109 people on board on the front end this time and get everybody in the chamber and have everybody voting and then really challenge the governor. Do you favor reducing the tax burden, or do you want government to spend more money? Even when you talk to Democrats, Mark, a lot of them will say, I think government's got enough money right now and they're not spending it wisely. I think most people people in Missouri would say that, yeah, despite it being sort of a purple state. All right, Tim, thanks. Keep us posted. Hey, Mark, thanks very much. Folks can follow me at uh, Twitter, Speaker Tim Jones. I'll keep you updated on veto session. We've got 29 bills to potentially override. We're going to govern where Jay Nixon is not. House Speaker Tim Jones with us this afternoon. I want to open up the phone lines. Thanks, Tim. I appreciate it.